Good morning. morning. It's wonderful to be here with all of you in God's house to receive his word and his wonderful gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation delivered to us through that word. Peace be with you. Thank you. Uh, This morning we're going to do something slightly different with our beginning. Um, We're actually going to have a rite of blessing. Uh, A family graciously has uh, purchased a pair of brand new igniters, candle igniters for the church. So we're going to bless those for the Lord's service now. So after that, we'll have the lighting of the candles as normal and we'll, we'll continue with our opening hymn. But for now, we begin the general rite of blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, Moses was commanded by the Lord to receive gifts from the people for the beautification of the sanctuary. Everyone whose heart stirred and whose spirit was moved brought a contribution to the Lord to be used in the Lord's house in all its services. Since the Lord has taught us in his holy word that everything is sanctified by the word of God and prayer, it is fitting that we bless and sanctify this candle igniter for use in God's holy house. So we continue with our little responsory. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have directed us to bring offerings for your glory. We implore you to bless this candle igniter. Grant that it may reflect our love for you, benefit your church, and bring joy to those who use it. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless this candle igniter and those who use it. Amen. All right, Ella, if you would go ahead and come up here, I will hand this off to you once I finally have it lit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. While she's lighting these candles, why don't we go ahead and join together in heart and in voice and sing our opening hymn, The Night Will Soon Be Ending. We will rise on verse 5.
Since God claims us still as his children through Mary's infant son, Jesus the Christ, having been made his children through our baptism, we begin in the name that we bear, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God the Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto you all. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. 
Please be seated as we continue with this morning's scripture readings. The Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up, get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, says to the cities of Judah. Behold your God, behold the Lord. God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord be blessed. You. The epistle reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, that all, all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be, to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him, without spot or blemish, and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia! Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, 
but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Having heard the word of our Lord, let us continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with this morning's sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's sermon is based off of our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, where the Lord speaks to us through Isaiah, and he says, Comfort, comfort my people. That's how our Old Testament reading began this morning. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. 
God wants His preachers to bring comfort to His people, to speak tenderly to His church, and so that's why I'm here this morning, is to have the wonderful opportunity to speak some comfort to all of you. He says, comfort, comfort my people. And to do this today, I want to answer really four questions, I think, that revolve around this. Four questions about this comfort Isaiah is speaking of, and those questions are, why do we need this comfort? How do we prepare to receive this comfort? How does this comfort come to us, and what is this comfort? So to begin, I'd like to start by setting the stage, if you will. I want to look at the historical situation that Isaiah is addressing here in chapter 40. Now, Isaiah here is prophesying about the fall of Judah to the Babylonian army, where the people of Judah will be dragged off into exile. Something that's going to be quite a rough and painful debacle for the people of God. There's going to be much hurting. There's going to be much sorrow and distress. There will be a great need for comfort for these troubled and defeated people who are seeing these troubles, who are seeing this defeat which they themselves were bringing upon themselves. Their own sin, their own rebellion against God had led to them being conquered and being driven out of the very land that God had given them. So that's the situation that the prophet Isaiah is addressing, okay? But really, this prophecy, this word of God is good for us even in our day. In fact, it's just as good for us today as it was in the day that Isaiah wrote it. Because we too have sinned. We too rebel against God. And we, too, have experienced the consequences of our sin in this world. So we, too, need comfort from the Word of God, this Word that God speaks and seeks to provide us today. So let's hear this, but I want you to listen to this now as applying to you and I, okay? So as we dig deeper, that's how I want you to hear this. Again, the first question I'm seeking to answer is, why do we need this comfort? And so for that, we're going to go back to the reading from Isaiah, because the Holy Spirit inspired Isaiah to write, saying, A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. All flesh is grass. That's us. I want you to think about how the grass looked outside back in May. It was lush and green and full of life. But now think about how the grass looks now at this point in December. Now, we haven't gotten enough snow to really do the grass in so far, but even so, there's still only a little bit of grass that's really very green. Most of it's brown and withering and dying, as it does every year. But this is also a good picture for us that relates to our own lives. Because what's happening to the grass outside is the same thing that happens with us. We wither, we fade, we die. Do you know this? As your body gets older and seems as though it's betraying you and falling apart, do you feel this? Do you sense your mortality? This mortality that we share is a worldwide thing. There's no exceptions. We are dying out here. And the root of this dead and dying grass thing is sin. The reason that we wither, fade, and die is because of sin. Because we sin. 
This is something that every single one of us shares. Each of us is born with this birth defect passed down to us by our parents, going back all the way to our first parents, Adam and Eve. This sinful nature we've inherited from Adam and Eve is a killer. And yet the thing is, we go along with it. We grow up and we grow into sinning. We enjoy it. We do it. Our sinful nature would have us not listen to what God has to say. Rather, we would like to have a go at it on our own. And this is really a recipe for disaster. And the the crazy thing is, you don't have to teach this. You don't have to teach people to do this. We come by it honestly. I don't have to teach any one of my four children to hit or to push a sibling. They come by it honestly. Sometimes I have to tell them for the third or even the fourth time in a ten-minute time span not to push, not to hit. And yet they do so anyway. This is how it is for every single one of us. Sin clings so tightly to us that It's that ingrained. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of of our God will stand forever. Now there's the answer, the word of our God. Okay, The fact that we even know the Lord as our God is simply out of His grace and mercy to begin with. And then He reveals His word to us. He reveals it through the prophets and through the apostles, the writings we have in Scripture. But he continues to reveal his word to us through preachers and through teachers today, through servants of God. He helps us to understand that his word is a word that you and I can count on, that his word is sure and certain at any point in time. And his word speaks to us today and tells us of the comfort that God has come here to share with us, to strengthen us and uphold us in this journey we called life. So it brings us to our second question then. How then do we prepare to receive this comfort? And once again, Isaiah has the answer. Isaiah writes, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah writes, prepare the way of the Lord. Isaiah here is prophesying about the ministry of John the Baptist, who would do exactly that. John the Baptist was the way preparer for the Christ. John came proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and the people came out confessing their sins, being baptized. And it was as it should have been with the coming of the Messiah in mind. But this is the same too for us, isn't it? Yes, Jesus has already come. He lived a perfect life, died on the cross to forgive us our sins, was raised to new life so that we too would be raised to new life. But we too are awaiting the Messiah. We're awaiting His second coming so that He can take all of us home as well. And yet we still get off track from that. Our focus is supposed to be on the Lord, on His kingdom work while we're here in this world. The reason that He doesn't take us out of this world after we're baptized is so that we can actually share that with other people, that more people might be saved. And yet that seems to never be our focus. We start our worship services off, our divine services, 
with confession and absolution. We come here in this place to confess our sins. Why? Because we also know that the Lord who calls us to turn in repentance from our sins also promises that every time we do so, He'll do what? He'll forgive us every single time we come before Him. He promises to forgive us. We repent of our sins, acknowledging that what we have done is grievous in His sight and that we deserve nothing but punishment. And He, in turn, washes us clean again and forgives us. Do you know your sins? Do you feel your sins, your sinfulness? It's really good and necessary that we do feel it. Those who don't sense or know their sins won't have much reason to seek God or the comfort He provides in the face of our sins. But as I mentioned, it's easy for us to get off track. How have you gotten off track? I know that you're here in this place to receive God's gifts, but are there rough places in your life that the Lord needs to make a plane? You might not have a mountain of pride, but do you at least have a little hill that the Lord needs to make even, to smooth out? Repentance is an ongoing affair for us as Christians. Our baptism, even, is an ongoing event for us as Christians. Many of us were baptized at a font not unlike this one back when we were infants, but that's not just a one-time event that happened and now it's good for the rest of your life. It's something God continues to provide for you over and over and over again. In your baptism, you were washed clean as God's word of promise was mixed with simple water and was placed upon you, blessing you, washing you clean, where now God has placed His name upon you. You were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Every time you remember whose name you bear, every time you remember that you are God's child, that you bear the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, your baptism is made new. You know what that means? When your baptism is made new, you are washed clean again. God delivers to you the very same gifts again that He delivered when that water first graced your forehead as an infant. You are washed clean, forgiven your sins, and delivered forgiveness, life, and salvation. That's what God does for you every time you come before Him in repentance and remember that you are His child. This is the rhythm of life for the baptized believer. This is why Martin Luther in his catechism tells us that every morning we ought to begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remembering our baptism, being washed clean once more, praying, and then going about our day. When we see our sins, when we feel our sins, when we see the damage that those sins cause in our lives, that should cause us to mourn. That should cause us to be sorrowful for what we have done. But Christ Himself says in His Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 5, He says, Blessed are those who mourn. Why? For they shall be comforted. If we don't mourn our sins, we have no reason to turn away from them. But as we mourn our sins, we repent, turn away from them, and the Lord brings us comfort. Comfort is what God is all about. Grace is what Jesus is all about. So then how does this grace and comfort come to us? Well, once again, we go back to Isaiah who writes, Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. 
Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up and fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Why do you come to this place on a day like this? Why are you here this morning? To be comforted? That's good. How are you comforted this morning? Yes, which you learned through what? Yeah, which, which you learned through the, the Lord's Word. The reason we come here, the reason we come to church on Sunday morning, the reason we gather together in a sanctuary like this is because this is where God promises to be when you come before Him to hear His Word, to receive His sacraments. This is where God promises to come to you to deliver His gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation to your very needful hands. He wants to shower you with His gifts. And this is where He does that. We call this the divine service. Not because we, as sinful human beings, seek to come and somehow serve the divine God. No, it's called the divine service because actually the reverse is true. God comes here in this place to serve us. To deliver to us that forgiveness, life, and salvation that we are so needful of. Emmanuel, God with us, comes with might and strength. But his might is wrapped in gentleness. He comes as a shepherd, as a good shepherd. We know who this is. This is Jesus Christ, our good shepherd who comes humbly and gently to be among us. Our very tender king who rules over us to bring comfort to us, even as He is fierce toward our enemies. He comes to us to love on us and even promises to die to protect us. In fact, He did just that. Christ, our Savior King, died on a cross, not unlike this one, so that our sins would be placed on Him and removed from us. For all time. He gave up his life on the cross in order that you and I would have life. So now, the power of sin lies broken. Death itself is vanquished. When the very Son of God dies to save sinful humanity, that's pretty powerful stuff. Our sins your sins, my sins, are forgiven, washed away. Peace with God is once more made. And so I say to you, peace be with you. And that leads us to our fourth and final question. What is this comfort that Isaiah is prophesying about? In what does it consist? And once again, we're going to go right back to our passage from Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah writes, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Her warfare has ended. That that phrase always jumps out at me. December 7th is my dad's birthday. But it's also the anniversary of a pretty infamous day, isn't it? What day would that be? 
That's right, Pearl Harbor, the infamous day when Pearl Harbor was bombed back in 1941, and our warfare was suddenly beginning as we entered the fray in World War II. That was a grim and awful day. But fast forward then to VE Day in 1945, or VJ Day, that's victory in Europe or victory in Japan. I wasn't there, of course. I'm just a little too young for that. But I had two grandfathers who were both in World War II who had all sorts of pictures and movies and things like that that helped to showcase this. And what I got to see was joy, joy and cheering. You had parades. You had people kissing strangers in the streets. You had confetti fluttering in the air the whole nine yards. That's what happens when your warfare is ended and you come out victorious. My brothers and sisters, in Christ, this is us. Victory over sin. Victory over death. Peace with God. Your sins no longer being held against you. Peace is yours through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose death has won your forgiveness, whose life you are now connected to through baptism, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too will walk in newness of life. What greater comfort can there be? Our warfare is ended. Our iniquity, our sin is pardoned for the sake of our Savior who took it all to the cross for us. We have received from the Lord's hand double for all of our sins. He hands over to us comfort, but not just once. Double the comfort. Comfort, comfort, my people, he says. All for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ. That's why it's in always in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the presentation of the offering. So let us join together in heart and in voice as we sing our offertory. rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you would restore us. Let your face shine that we might be saved. As you led Joseph like a flock, so now by your Son, lead us into straight paths. Bring us out of the bondage of our sins and plant us securely in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in your blessed patience, you sent your prophets and apostles, your pastors and teachers in all times, that sinners would not perish, but rather reach repentance and find comfort in your word, which alone stands forever. Preserve the servants of your church. Give to our congregation and all congregations an increase of hope 
that we may await the revealing of the new heavens and the new earth in lives of holiness and godliness, diligent to be found without spot or blemish and at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, preserve your gift of marriage against the ravages of sin and the schemes of the devil and the ragings of this world. We ask that you would bless the couples, the families, and the children of our congregation. Strengthen them in love and care for one another and establish them on the foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all comfort and grace, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and in mortal men. Give us leaders who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that we may live in godly quietness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, graciously regard all those for whom we pray, especially those who are in need of health and healing. For Sue, the mother of Lori, for Carol, Julia, and Diane, for Lori, for Roger and Nancy, for Robert, the father of Chuck, for those dealing with cancer and those who are dealing with the reality of COVID-19. We also bid you bring comfort to the family and friends of those whom the Lord has called home, for the family of Jean, who fell asleep in her Lord on Thursday, November 26th, and for the family and friends of Jean, the father of Jen, and the grandfather of Jace, who fell asleep in his Lord on Monday, November 30th. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you once prepared the way of your only begotten Son through the preaching and the baptism of John. We ask that you would prepare now your baptized Christians with true repentance and faith that seeks the forgiveness of sins, that they would worthily eat and drink Christ's true body and blood in the blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, dear Father, do we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. And now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Now depart in his peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We sing together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endureth forever. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated as we continue with our short hymn of departure, after which we'll have a couple of announcements. Right, we have just a few announcements this morning. Um, I want to note that this upcoming Friday, that is December 11th, uh, 2020, from 6 to 7.30 p.m., we have our live nativity. All right, we are still having that In fact, we've already got a whole bunch of people who are involved with it. So I definitely suggest that as many of you are able, please go ahead and come on through that. This would be a pretty good time uh, for us to, well, be reminded about why this whole season in this such dreary time of the year. <laughs> so it's a good thing for us to, to join together for. Uh, I want to note that Pastor Schrader's Thursday morning Bible class is getting ready to begin a new Bible study. So if you were looking 
to try to get involved with a Bible study, there will be one on Thursday mornings. Uh, and this study he's doing now is called Jesus, a story of the words of Matthew, Mark, or sorry, a study, a study of the words of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, so if you're interested in, in joining a Bible study during the day, that would be a good one to get plugged into right now, because they're starting it up, I believe, this week. This Thursday. This Thursday, yeah. So that would be a good one. Um, this Wednesday, we have our second Advent service. So on Wednesday, December 9th at 7 p.m., we'll continue our Advent Wednesday services with our focus on Jesus as the root of the tree of Jesse. So please join us for that. Uh, we had our Timeless Treasures Bazaar yesterday, and they wanted us as pastors to make sure that we were thanking everyone uh, who was involved with all that. Uh, the whole thing went off very, very well. There were lots of comments from people who are not members of our church uh, thanking us for how careful we were with how we orchestrated everything. So people felt very safe coming here and, and going back to, to, to purchase all sorts of stuff from the bazaar. In fact, uh, the bazaar raised $3,500 so far for this year, which I think is a pretty wonderful thing, especially with everything else that's going on right now. Um, so they did pretty well with that. And uh, there's still stuff on tables back there in the back hallways if you are interested in going and seeing what they still have available. Um, if you want cookies, make sure you get them probably today, otherwise they're probably not going to last. Um, not to say that they're going to go bad, I don't think that would ever happen. Um, but there just won't be many left. They're all going into the auction. They're all going into the auction. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't know how many would make it home. Um, I also want to note that on our church Facebook page and on our church website, uh, we have a number of different video devotions that are posted now. I've been doing devotions uh, about two to three per week for the last six or seven weeks, so there's a backlog of them now. So please go on there and, and, and check some of those out, get some more of God's Word um, in your life. Um, I think those are all of my announcements. Uh, I think there's a couple of other announcements that would also need to be made. Which one of you wants to go first? Me. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Lauren, point to you. <laughs> You do? All right. You go right ahead.
for a two-year term and some award. Education and social ministry and stewardship do not yet have enough volunteers to do this work. The least experienced among us still have the talent to give to the efforts of these boys. The youngest adult members have some talent to give to the efforts of these boys. They may visit us to our and often still find time to serve others. So please contact me to learn about how you can help on one of these boards, education, or social ministry, or stewardship. Thank you. Are there any other uh, important announcements that might need to be made? Going once? Going twice? Oh, all right. Thank you all. Go in peace and serve the Lord.